there's pros and cons to every single play style in Rocket League, and that's the reason why certain players can reach rank 1 in Rocket League, and that's the reason why certain players can't. The players that have reached rank 1 in Rocket League have learned to have the best play style for the current meta each season. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to counter every single playstyle in Rocket League. Obviously, there's some playstyles that are extremely difficult to counter. Some are more easy to counter. If you stay till the very end, I'll let you know a quick tip I do to change the way I play for each game. So before we get into the playstyles, we need to understand what are each of the playstyles. And of course, in this sense, I'm speaking of a generality because everyone has their own unique playstyle. But a lot of people share the same habits. I'm going to be talking about 1v1 and 2v2 today. The reason I'm not going to go over 3v3 is because it's the least played game mode and I don't think a lot of people enjoy 3v3 or play it. For 1v1, you really only have one or two different play styles. One of the play styles is going to be someone who's a ball chaser who's constantly going after the ball. He never turns away. That's the most annoying player to play against. And then the second one is you just have a passive player, someone that sits back, waits, waits for the opponent to make a mistake. In 2v2, it's kind of similar to 1v1. A lot of the times, especially in lower ranks, you'll find yourself playing or having a teammate that is a ball chaser, someone that's always going for the ball, always cutting you off, something like that. And I'll also show you guys how to play with these kind of teammates. And then you also have passive players. So in 2v2, there's your first man and then there's your second man. Your second man is also known as your last man. He is the last man on defense. That's why he is called that. And as the last man, your job is just to sit and save the ball. So a lot of players will just play a designated last man role. And of course, ball chasing isn't always a bad thing. A lot of people have this negative connotation attached to ball chasing. But if you watch two players like Zen and Fatira play, sometimes Zen will intentionally ball chase. And I know I said I wouldn't talk too much about 3v3, but in 3v3, a lot of the time there is designated ball chasers like Zen, Ahmed, and a lot of other people I'm not going to go too deep into. Don't immediately think that ball chasing is always bad, though it is extremely bad in lower ranks because it's difficult to pull off, and if you're ball chasing in a lower rank, it's highly likely that you don't know what you're doing. Now that we know every play style in the game in a generality, we can speak on how to actually counter each play style. So starting from 1v1, in 1v1, if you're playing a ball chaser, really the best way to beat someone who's always going for the ball is just to wait. It's going to get to a point where eventually, if your defense is good enough, all you have to do is just wait for them to give the ball away or make a mistake, and then you have a free opportunity for a goal because they're going to be low boost or they're going to be out of the play for a second, and you can simply just either A, go for an air dribble bump, B, go for a power shot, C, go for a bounce dribble. There's a lot of different options, but you need to make sure you're capitalizing on the free goals here because this is what's going to make or break the entire game. Now, if you're playing someone who's extremely passive, the best way to beat this player is kind of the opposite. You want to be on the ball for as long as possible and you don't want to give any space to this player because they're used to having space and if you take away that space it's going to completely change the way they have to play the game and it's going to make them extremely uncomfortable side note this is why when pros play a little bit lower ranks like gc2s or gc1s they make these ranks look significantly lower than they actually are because they're putting them in positions that they aren't used to so a lot of the times you'll see a pro play a lower rank and you're thinking there's no way this guy is this rank. It's because of the positions the pro is putting this player in. Now on to 2v2, this is a little bit more complicated because there is a lot more players in 2v2, which means there's a lot more play styles that have adapted throughout the years. But once again, speaking in general, because I don't know every play style in the entire game, unfortunately, you can't really counter a ball chaser the same way you would in 1v1 that you will in 2v2. And that's because there's four players on the pitch opposed to two players. So if you just try to sit back and wait for the ball chaser to give up the ball, his teammate might be there and he might pick up the ball. So you have to take a completely different route when you do this. So instead of waiting for the ball chaser to give up the ball, the best way you can beat a ball chaser every time you have the ball there's a 99% chance that they're going to insta challenge you no ball chasers especially in lower ranks fake because they don't understand what that is they're always going to go for the ball so the best thing you can do is either a when they're about to challenge go for a low 50 that will win the next possession and hopefully your teammate can follow it up or you can follow it up or the next best option is to flick it over them that is a really good play and it works 99% of the time because they're going to answer challenge and you can obviously read that. Now, you know how I talked about how I can change my play style every game. This is through pattern recognition. It's very similar to chess. When you see someone doing something X amount of times, 
you know they're going to do it again just through likelihood and statistics. So if I see someone insta challenge me eight times in a row, I can obviously just flick it over preemptively flick it over them and I know I will get it past them because of pattern recognition and that applies to a lot of aspects not just in 2v2 but in any mode and a lot of things in Rocket League if you notice a lot of the time when you go in the air and the player pre jumps you you can fake a touch to the air on the wall and just go back down and then it will hopefully take him out of the play that's a huge tip that completely changed my gameplay now when you play a passive player in Rocket League it's a bit different because in my opinion being passive in a 2v2 game is one of the best things you can do because all you're doing is waiting for them to make a mistake which never fails someone will always make a mistake even at the highest level so what i like to do to beat passive players is make sure to include my teammate and to make as many team plays as i possibly can it's much easier for a passive player to let you come to them with a dribble or a flick or a shot than it is for them to defend a shot coming from your teammate passed by you for example if you pass your teammate the only way that they can save a shot that is drilled at your teammate into their net, the only way they save this would be with perfect defense and rotation, and the ideal situation for them would be they have one man first on the ground challenging, and then the second man is on the backboard, or sometimes it will go the other way. Sometimes there will be someone in net and he should challenge first, or the player on the backboard should challenge first. Usually the player who's closest to the ball should challenge first, except if someone's on the backboard they should always be the last player to go so what happens is when you pass to your teammate the only way they can save this is if the player in the net pre jumps a shot because the player on the backboard can only cover the very top of the net they can't cover anywhere else so the player net he's only covering the center of the net so your best bet of scoring in this situation is to slam a shot through your teammate into the net and it will go in most of the time if the player is very passive and he doesn't like to challenge things like that a huge misconception in rocket league is that any of these play styles will just automatically beat the opponent and the unfortunate reality is that that's just not the case the only way to beat your opponent is by methodically playing around them or beating them to balls or winning challenges and just playing for the next possession just because you've adapted some of these play styles or maybe you have a ball chasing teammate or maybe you have a ball chasing opponent it doesn't mean you're going to automatically just win the entire game unfortunately i wish it was that easy and that was the case but this video is just about me giving you guys general tips really the most important tip i can give you is pattern recognition understanding what your opponent's going to do when they're going to do it is going to be far more effective than any other tip i can give you guys honestly just make sure to understand what your team is doing and if you really don't you should watch your own replays and analyze and see what you're doing wrong i hope this video helped you guys out if this video did be sure to like and subscribe to my youtube channel i have a discord server where i'm very active and we have a community over there be sure to join see you on the next one peace